process. I mean, a lot of you are, are calling, I'm sure you could tell me your stories. Um, but I wanna, the last thing I want to say, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, I've been thinking about this alone writing, and uh, um, I think all of us are on a spectrum, just in, in terms of like being gay, or are you gay or straight, we're on a spectrum too. There's, um, I have friends who, uh, I have one friend, he has like 20 lovers. He's like so busy. I think of him as a, a, a sex artist. It's like part of his creative expression is, um, is sex. Uh, and I have um, a, another friend who is part of a triad, and then it became a, a quad. You call it quad. <laughs> anyway, um, and and then I have friends who are totally monogamous and, and not at all interested in um, any any kind of openness. And I would say, like, I'm in the middle. Um, I have a, another friend. Her and her husband give each other golden tickets. And I love it. And they like they, one of them is traveling, they get a golden ticket. And that's more my speed. And what I've really been writing a lot about is um, you know, what's what's your purpose for for in your relationship? What's your purpose for doing polyamory? And my purpose is um, I really like long-term relationships. I like uh, you know, building a whole world together. Um, what, but if, if within that world there is no fluidity and flexibility, you know, the whole till, till death do us part, if, if you say to me, like, it's you and me, and it, it's just you and me having sex until the grave, that makes me nervous. I, I immediately want to have sex with someone else. <laughs> you know, it's too close. Um, but I do like to have boundaries and framework, and I think, but having that openness for me, I think really keeps the erotic spark in a long-term relationship, and that's one of the things that I'm very much interested in. So anyway, I thank you. I look forward to hearing if uh, anybody has questions. Yes? Uh-huh. It is coming out in, um, uh, after the new year, tw the spring 2015. See, this is what I think is so interesting. I just have to jump in here. I love that this is the first question. Um, I think there's emotional poly. I think there is, I, I have this tremendous love for him. I don't want him to go away. He's part of my um, world. People, this freak people out like you couldn't believe. And that shocks me. I, um, anybody could listen to Gwyneth Paltrow and her conscious uncoupling thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, she's, yeah, I read this article, they were so mean to her. And I feel like, the, you know, this setup that we have, which I thought, like you, uh, oh, you know, we're not doing poly anymore, really, so what's the big deal? We were taken to court. We spent thousands, and the evaluation cost $15,000, and that doesn't even include the lawyers. So this is some serious, like, I, I don't really care what you call it, labels. What disturbs me about our culture is what, what do you care? <laughs> what do you care that my, what do you care if maybe I sleep with him sometimes, maybe I don't sleep with him at all, maybe, uh, you know, we're just best friends, but what, why is that so weird? Why is that so weird? My, my uh, husband number two always said, uh, everybody would be so much more comfortable if you hated his guts. <laughs> and it's true. People come up to me, they're like, they don't get it. They just don't get it, and they're um, they're frightened by it. And they, uh, I don't get what they're doing. I, I know there can be abusive relationships, and you need to play. Maybe you need to play the blame game. I don't want to play the blame game. Because I think there is this whole evolution of. Con
consciousness around relationships. Anyway, just one. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out that 2012 was the first presidential election ever in which the great grandfather of both candidates, both Obama and Romney, were polygamous. No kidding. <laughs>